Hello and welcome. You're here with me, Charlie Tumblr. We're in DCS and we're going to be flying our AV-8B night attack Harriers um, using a laser guided Mavericks. And before we go into the actual game itself, um, we're going to have a quick look at a special control setting. AV-8B. Um, what I use is easy mode on the TDC. So what that means is when I move the targeting pod around, when I stop moving around, it automatically generates a target at that point. Um, if you are getting started with the game, I would recommend doing this. Um, later on, you might want to take that off. All the all the difference is, is when you don't have it on, when you move the TDC around, you then have to push DDC to press to then select a target. So it's just an extra key press. Here's our Harrier. And we have the four Mavericks loaded, and we also have a targeting pod. Targeting pod, very important for this sortie if you don't have anybody else that's going to be lasing the target for you. We're going to have to do this ourselves. Um, if you don't take the targeting pod, you won't be able to fire these Mavericks unless somebody else is helping you. I'm going to show you the loadout here. We have four Mavericks loaded. They're an air to ground missile. Um, I always try if L is available. That's the laser guided version, it says they're laser. Um, it's the newer version of the E. E is a bigger bang, um, but the L does the job just as well. And of course, we have our targeting pod. Request rearming. Here we are in the sky and we're heading towards the target. Uh, I have a line of four vehicles at waypoint one. These four here. So we're going to murder all of those. Let's uh, put my aircraft in a dental climb as we head towards the target. And I'm going to use AFC on. And that'll uh, give me an autopilot assist and give me a chance to talk. Let's get ourselves set up for war then. Master arm on. Air to ground on. Go to our stores page and select Maverick. At this point, if you've done a cold start, what you'll find is you'll see 1111 and an X, and that's the laser code that it's going to look for. Um, what we need to do is set a standard code, so we can use 1688 enter, and that's the default laser code. If you are working as a part of a flight and you don't want to um, conflict with other guys' lasers, use 1588 or another acceptable code. Um, if you have a JTAC or a UAV that's um, transmitting, you might have a specific code that you need to type in. Um, that This is the point where you put it in. Also notice on the very bottom left here, it says standby. So we're waiting for the seeker head to warm up. Unlike the infrared Mavericks, um, it doesn't take very long, 30 to 90 seconds, and it'll be good to go. So while we're waiting for that to warm up, let's go down here. We're going to go into our map screen, and I'm going to hit Desig because we're hitting waypoint one and I know waypoint one is the target area so we can designate that to start us off that way when I turn the teapot on to get out of standby it's already pointing in the right area it's a little bit cloudy out here but we should be okay for now if you notice we have the diamond here with the dot that's a target point that's what we've done with our um, waypoint turn it to target point and then we have the octagon around it that's showing where the teapot is pointing over here let's take it out of CC and put it to flare I'm gonna zoom in can use these keys. Um, I actually have these bound to a different button so I can zoom right in and there is our poor little victim. We're in INS mode at the moment so if I try to move the teapot around it, it, it's, it's going backwards and in really big jumps it's really a bit crazy. So if I push sensor select down twice like so it's now in teapot mode and I've got a lot finer adjustment so that's in for his pretty much middle of his bottom there. Okay, that's been about 30 or so seconds, the Maverick definitely would have warmed up. And what we have up here is we have an X at the top of the screen, and that tells me that the Maverick is currently bore sighted and looking straight ahead. There's no laser searching going on. So we're going to give it a laser to search for. Up here we have a button that says safe and TRNL. These are the two we're interested in at the moment. So we're going to take it out of safe. So the laser is now armed. And then we're going to take it out of training laser and put it into laser mode. When I want to actually laser the target, I'm going to hit the fire button, like so. And when I do hit the fire button, if you notice in here, we have a flashing L to say that my laser is firing. And in the T-Pod, if I'm looking in the T-Pod, I have a flashing L as well. And when I turn that off, it just becomes a solid L. Let's tweak that target slightly. We're getting quite close now, so I'm going to uncage the Maverick, like so. And now you see this X is scanning left and right, so the seeker head is looking for that laser code of 1688. If I turn it on, if I fire the laser, and I point my nose down slightly towards the target, if you notice, 
we've suddenly got an extra box in here and that is telling me that the seeker head has found a laser in that area and it's locked on. We now have in range here so I'm good to fire. Rifle. Now because I have the AFC on, this automatic flight assist thing, my plane is relatively stable after I've fired it. Without it you'll find you really battling with the controls and it's hard to stay steady and level. Now the thing with the lasers is we have to keep pointing it the whole time the missile is in the air. So if you can't see the vehicle in here, then the laser isn't isn't in the right place. So we need to make sure that we don't let uh, we don't overfly it too soon, or we don't do a really hard turn and take it out of the way. This little kind of box here is showing where the um, the teapot is pointing. If it goes too far to the edge of the screen and goes off, then we're going to lose the track. So we just wait for this Maverick down here, there you go, flying down towards that BTR-80 down there and we're going to just keep checking the lock, we can move it, boom, and there we go, shack. Now again to remember, turn off your laser and it means you can do a re-attack much quicker. If you don't turn it off, um, actually what I'll do is on the next run in I'll forget, forget to turn it off um, and I'll show you what happens on that one. So let's speed up time, we'll run back out again and we'll turn around and do another attack. So we got to about 8 miles on this one, turn back in, find a new target in the teapot. I know the targets are in a line from east to west, so that will make things a little bit quicker. Okay, should we see it? I level off now. So if I come off to the east. There's our next target, a tank. Zoom in. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to uncage the Maverick. Unlike infrared Mavericks, you can uncage a laser Maverick pretty much any time and it won't recage with the infrared Mavericks. If it, you're out of gimbal limits, um, it recages, which is a bit of a pain. So we're going to turn in. It's still looking for that target. So you notice we don't have that extra square in the middle. Even when I point at it, there's nothing. But as soon as I turn the laser on, and I'm going to do that with a joystick button. Actually, we'll pause and I'll show you that one. Go into controls. So I always have my teapot on the right-hand side, uh, which means that when I'm in this mode, the fire button is always the top middle button. It's button number eight. So if you set right NPC OSB 08 to a button, it means you don't have to be fiddling around down here. You can just turn the laser on and off. And what I'll do for the next one ends is I will always use this button rather than use the fire button. So I'm going to fire it now, give it a second, and then we have now that, that extra box inside. We have in range, so we can fire. Rifle. Again, we can zoom out. Just make sure we've got a good lock. We have our little uh, box here at the top, so I really want I don't want that to go too close to the edge of the screen, because it means I'm going to lose the, uh, the track, and I'm going to forget to turn off my laser this time as well. So here goes the Maverick. It's going to hit the T-80 rather than those two other tanks or two other vehicles. Come around. We can see on here we do a little last adjustment. Boom. There it goes. Now I'm going to leave the laser running while I prepare for the next run in. And what we'll see is the, the laser kind of gets too hot and it needs to protect itself so it will de-arm itself. So it take a, should only take a few more seconds. Speed up time. There we go. So it took quite a while there actually, uh, longer than I thought it was going to take, um, and it, it, it's protecting itself and turned itself off. So if you run in, always have a quick check to make sure it says armed. And laser. Now, if you notice, it kept at laser mode and didn't go back to training, so you just have to make sure you rearm the laser. So let's run in. We are 12 miles away, which is miles away, which is great. We'll do a hanking turn in here. 109 by the looks of it. So do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, that was just her telling me that AFC has come off. So let's put AFC back on again. The plane's nice and steady. We're in cloud, so let's move away from the cloud. look for the next target. There's still a little dot down there. Here we go, we're coming out now. So I know that they are off to the east. 
So it's telling me this is north this way, so if I go this way we're going east. So there's the next target. You can zoom right in. And we're good to go. So the laser is armed. We're in laser mode. Gonna uncage. Gonna fire the laser. Turn towards the target and straight away we've got a lock. Now if you notice we don't have in range here. So I'm just gonna wait because what it's doing is it's looking at height and speed. There you go, it's in range now. Which we can see here. Rifle. Off we go. So I'm gonna offset so that I don't fly straight over the target because I want the target involved to keep a good eye on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the laser off this time and I'll show you how quick you can do a re attack for the final one. So that BTR is just a little bit off to the east down the coast. Okay. Still tracking through the tree here. It's off a little, so let's bring it in. Oh, did we get a tree strike? Oh no, there's the Maverick there still. Coming in. Boom. He's dead. Right. So, laser off. Zoom out. Try and do this before we overfly the target. We know it's off to the east, which is off this way. It's only a small target. Uh, tree, there it is there. Zoom in. Try and catch it. There we go. Right, it's turning with 2.8 miles away. We're going to go running it. I can uncage the Maverick because there is no gimbal limit. But come round. 3.4 miles away. I can't see the target in the t pauses they won't find the laser. I can see it now, so laser's on. He's already locked on. It says in range. Rifle. And what we see now is we've got these four lines. That's telling me I'm out of ordnance. I have no more infrared, uh, no more laser mavericks left. I'm head off towards this target. Keep the t pod pointing at it. There you go. Four mavericks. Four kills. So that was firing laser mavericks in the Harrier. If you have any questions or, or queries, please comment below. I will always try and answer as soon as I can. Until then, stay safe, happy hunting, see you in the skies.